Hello everyone. Before the spring break, we already finished the growth anatomy of the brainstem. And today we will turn our attention in this lesson to the cranial nerves and their nucleus in brainstem. In this section, we will talk about the difference between the cranial nerve and the spinal nerve and uh, learn the functional component of a cranial nerve, uh, learn the uh, cranial nucleus uh, arranged in the uh, brainstem. And for each cranial nerve, we will learn about their uh, function, their nuclei location, and uh, uh, their uh, pathway or the muscle innervated. And also, we will also talk about the uh, possible lesion symptoms and uh, how to test for the cranial nerve injury. Before we start this section, let me just remind you of the basic organization of our sensory and motor system. So uh, our neural system was composed by central and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system was composed by brain and uh, spinal cord. And uh, the uh, uh, peripheral nervous system includes the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. And uh, the picture on the right side shows you the flow of the uh, signal inside the nervous system. And you can see the yellow part is the central nervous system. The um, purple part is a, a peripheral nervous system. So the um, signals from the internal and external environment uh, coming to the central nervous system through the sensory nerve and the, the sensory ganglia. And the, then uh, after analyze and uh, integration by the central nervous system, the um, uh, outflow of the uh, neural system um, coming out from the central, uh, central part through the uh, motor nerves into the effectors. So the effector include the uh, skeletal muscles or the smooth muscles or cardiac muscle and gland. So uh, the cranial nerve um, belongs to the peripheral nervous system. Here are several uh, quizzes uh, just to use this to reveal uh, what you already know. So how many pairs of uh, spinal nerves you have? How many pairs of uh, cranial nerve you have? And uh, cranial nerves uh, consider part of the what nervous system? And uh, uh, cranial nervous nuclei uh, lies inside peripheral or central nervous system. This picture just to remind you the gross anatomy of the brainstem. Uh, the left picture shows you the uh, ventral side of the brainstem, and uh, the uh, right picture it shows you the dorsal side of the brainstem. And you can see the three part uh, of the brainstem was labeled in different colors. The purple part and the upper part of the brainstem is the um, midbrain. And uh, the middle part, the green part, is the pons. And uh, the pink part is the medulla. And you can see some of the cranial nerve come out from the ventral side of the brainstem. Some uh, one pair of these cranial nerve coming out from the uh, dorsal side. And uh, you can see um, there are uh, some uh, cranial nerves come from midbrain. Some of the uh, uh, 
uh, cranial nerves come from the pons and the medullas. Before we focus on each of these cranial nerves, let's start with the introduction of the cranial nerve. So we know that um, we have uh, 31 pair of the uh, spinal nerves which connect to the spinal cord. And the cranial nerve, cranial nerves are just like the uh, spinal nerve. They are the nerves connect with the brain stems and the other part of the brain. And um, uh, the cranial nerves innovate the structures in the head and the neck region. And expect uh, there there is a uh, exception uh, is a cranial nerve ten, the vagus nerve, because it uh, run a long way to innervate the visceral organs. And uh, uh, also, uh, most of the cranial nerves uh, innervate the same side of. Uh, the cranial nerve. So most of the cranial nerve lesions lesion, lesion, uh, produce ipsilateral signs. This picture shows you the inferior view of the brain. And uh, you can see uh, there are two cranial nerves emerge from the forebrain. That is cranial nerve 1 uh, and cranial nerve 2. And then the purple circle uh, shows you that most of the cranial nerves emerge from the level of the foreign stem. And um, you can see uh, the lower part of the foreign stem connect with the spinal cord. One of the cranial nerve, that is a cranial nerve 11, emerge not only from the brain and uh, part of it uh, also come from the spinal cord. So what are the cranial nerves? And you can see at least all the 12 pair of the cranial nerve in this form. Uh, the cranial nerve actually can be labeled from, uh, you see Roman numeral from uh, 1 to 12. And they all have their own name. And you can see the cranial nerve one is a olfactory nerve. The second one is a optic nerve. And then the third one, oculomotor nerve. And the fourth one is a trochlear nerve. The fifth one is a trigeminal nerve. And then the abducent facial vestibular cochlea is a cranial nerve six to eight. And then the uh, Ninth one is a um, glossopharyngeal, and then the tenth cranial nerve is the vagus nerve, and then the accessory nerve. Sometimes we call it spinal accessory nerve because part of it are uh, coming from the spinal cord, and then the twelfth nerve is the uh, hypoglossal nerve. Mm, so. Um, what uh, pneumonia can help us to remember them. Uh, and you can see at least here this O, O, O to touch and feel very good violet, such heaven. So you can use this pneumonic to uh, help you because they, you can see the first cranial nerve is olfactory. So we choose that O. And uh, the such heaven, the such use the uh, spinal, the first letter of the spinal accessory nerve. So this may help you to remember the names. And also you can see the third column uh, shows you because uh, some of, unlike the spinal cord, spinal nerves, they are all mixed nerve. Uh, some of the cranial nerves are sensory nerve, some of the nerves are motor nerve, but there are other uh, nerves are con contain both sensory component and motor component. 
so they include both components. So here's another uh, mnemonic will help you to remember it. This is a some say Mary money, but my brother says big brain matter most. This can help you to remember which cranial nerve is sensory nerve, which cranial nerve is a motor nerve. If you have better mnemonics, you, uh, you are welcome to share with us. Use this picture and the, uh, the next picture to locate each of the cranial nerve and observe where they, uh, in which level they connect with the brain stem. You already mentioned the spinal nerves are all mixed nerves. That means in one uh, given uh, spinal nerves, they uh, carried both of the motor information or sensory information. So the uh, neurons which carry the motor information, we call it efferent nerves uh, and uh, some carries the afferent information. But the cranial nerves are different from the spinal nerves and you can see in this picture I uh, we labeled the cranial nerve in different colors. So in the uh, picture instructions uh, shows you the uh, spinal nerve labeled with blue are the sensory cranial nerves. The uh, red cranial nerves is the motor cranial nerves. If the cranial nerves are, are mixed, we label it, it in green. So some of the cranial nerves are pure sensory nerves. Some of the cranial nerves are motor, pure motor uh, nerves. And, uh, but some of the cranial nerves are mixed. They contain both sensory and uh, motor component. So we know that the nerves uh, are formed by the axons of the neuron cells and uh, the cell body usually cluster together to form the nucleus. And we know that most of the, uh, the cranial nerve are coming out from the level of the brainstem, different level of the brainstem. And their nucleus are located inside the different level of the brainstem. So if a cranial nerve uh, is mixed and uh, this cranial nerve must have more than one nucleus to originate out. And uh, this must include at least one sensory and at least one motor. And uh, sometimes it could be, could be more. And uh, sometimes more than one spinal nerve could originate from a single nucleus. Uh, so according to the uh, uh, different uh, functional component, like the sensory motor or mixed, and the cranial nerve could be catalog, um, uh, categorized by this component. So what you're seeing is a um, phantom view of the uh, dorsal brainstem. We removed the cell, cell, uh, cerebellum and then we look through the floor of the uh, fourth ventricle. And we talk about it's a phantom view because we are looking through the dorsal surface. 
through the floor of the uh, fourth ventricle, as if, if as if we could see the gray matters themselves. And um, what we see is a complex array of the nucleus that comes in different sizes and different shapes. And for purpose of uh, making this illustration uh, just a slightly less complicated, and um, we have organized it by uh, color code and by size. So on the left side of the figure, we have our sensory nucleus, and on the right side of the figure, we have the um, illustrate the motor nuclei. So of course, the neural uh, neural system displays bilateral uh, symmetry. So on each side, we will we would have both the sensory and the motor nuclei. So just imagine uh, you fold this illustration of the nucleus one side on top of the nuclei, uh, others, so that all of these nucleus could exist on each side of the brainstem. And, uh, and you can see uh, the motor nucleus can be further divided into uh, somatic motor, the brachial motor, the visceral motor, and they are labeled with different colors. And the sensory nucleus can be further divided into general sensory, special sensory, and visceral sensory. And then they also uh, labeled with uh, blue, green, and purple colors. So you can see uh, actually this um, uh, nucleus are located in different level of the brainstem. Uh, like, for example, you can see in the middle brain, mid brain level, and you can see the uh, oclomotor nucleus, which uh, associate with the uh, third uh, cranial nerve, and you have you can see the chocolate nucleus, which associate with the fox cre uh, cranial nerve. And uh, you can also see some very long uh, nucleus, the trigeminal nu uh, nuclei. You can see they, it uh, stick, stick into the um, midbrain, the uh, pons, and uh, the medulla level. You can all see this uh, trigeminal nuclei. And, um, and you can see in the pons level, you can see the abducent nucleus, the facial motor nucleus, and also uh, in the uh, medulla level, you can see the dorsal motor nucleus of bigger's, the nucleus ambitious and bigger's, and the uh, accessory nucleus. So all these nucleus, if you see them from a longitudinal view, it actually formed uh, six columns. And if you observe it in a cross section, you will see different view. If you're wondering why uh, we have so many, like six kind of this uh, uh, functional component of the uh, cranial nerve nucleus, why they call it somatic motor, or the brachial motor, or special sensory motor. And uh, this term refers to other uh, their uh, embryological origins of these tissues that they are connected up with this nucleus in the brainstem. So uh, if, uh, because, uh, if there are muscles, they are derived uh, from the embryological somites. And so we call these axons that connect to those muscles, the somatic motor axons, that which means the skeletal muscles. And um, uh, so in the head and neck, and the region of this, uh, the embryos, we have something called the uh, pharyngeal arches, 
and uh, from the pharyngeal arches are derived a variety of the tissues, which include some of the muscles um, in the cranial region and uh, uh, deep within the neck. And uh, the motor neurons that innervate this derived uh, or pharyngeal arches that becomes muscles are called brachial motor neurons, which give rise to the brachial motor axons. And so um, we can recognize uh, the uh, distinct set of the nucleus in the brainstem that are connected to these muscles derived from the pharyngeal arches rather than the uh, somas. And, uh, we, and uh, the uh, motor neurons, which goes to the smooth muscles, uh, like the hard muscle, the uh, uh, smooth muscle in the intestine, these muscles, uh, these motor neurons, we call it visceral motors. Uh, so come to the uh, uh, sensory part. Um, if uh, the general sensory system derived uh, from our skin surface or the muscles, our joint, the, um, uh, this part we call this um, uh, general sensory. And uh, if they are the spiral, spinal uh, special sensory system, uh, such as our eye, our ears, our tongues, our nose, if these uh, come from these uh, uh, organs, we call it uh, special sensory. And uh, uh, if this um, sensory came from our uh, visceral organs, we call it visceral sensory. So in this picture, on the left side, you can see the dorsal view of the brainstem. And if we do three cross section in the, uh, through different level, you can see the first uh, cross section is the uh, midbrain level and then we do the second cross section is the middle pons level and then uh, the third one is the lower pons and then you can see the right part of the picture that is a cross section of the different level and uh, in the first cross section you can see the uh, um, nucleus labeled with red color that is the uh, ocular motor nucleus and endigar or west hall nu nucleus, which uh, associate with the third cranial nerve. And then the, uh, in the middle pons level, and you can see the uh, trigeminal motor nucleus and uh, the uh, principal trigeminal nucleus. And then in the third, uh, lower pons cross section and you can see the different colors uh, and uh, oh i forgot to mention on the top part will be the dorsal side of the um, uh, brainstem and the, the bottom part will be the uh, ventral part of the brainstem so you can see this um, the third the lower pons cross section uh, the nucleus located in the dorsal side of the uh, brainstem, which which is near to the floor of the fourth ventricle. And then we have the uh, fourth and fifth and the sixth cross section. Uh, which cutting through from the upper medulla, middle medulla, and the caudal medulla. So uh, uh, it's the same, uh, the cross section, the, the top part of the cross section will be the dorsal uh, medulla, and the bottom of the cross section will be the ventral medulla. So all these um, uh, nucleus are located close to the dorsal side, and uh, you can see in the middle medulla level, uh, this um, 
uh, this uh, uh, new place just located close to the uh, floor of the false ventricle. So if you observe a um, cross-section of the spinal cord, you may realize that the uh, posterior horn uh, composed by this um, uh, sensory neural, neural cells and the anterior or ventral horn were composed by this uh, uh, motor neural cells. So uh, these uh, uh, picture shows you in the left lower part is a cross section of the spinal cord, and uh, in the top on the top of it is this. Um, uh, we look at the uh, spinal cord in the embryo. That is the uh, the neural tube. Um, so this is a cross section of this neural tube. Now you can see uh, the different neural cells was labeled with different colors. So in the posterior and the dorsal part, you have the somatic sensory, the visceral sensory, and then in the ventral part, you have the visceral motor and somatic motor. So between it, I draw a red line that is the uh, um, that is the socket limiting. You may know this, uh, this uh, terms when you uh, study the uh, development of the neural system. And uh, you can see uh, in the cross section of the spinal cord in the adult, and you can see the, uh, um, the uh, different the sensory or the motor neurons. Uh, follows a similar arrangement. So you can see from the dorsal side to the ventral side, you have the somatic sensory, the visceral sensory, the visceral motor, and the somatic motor. But when it comes to uh, the cross section of the brain stem, because the central canals opened up uh, to form the false ventricle, so all this um, uh, this uh, sensory or motor um, neural cells, uh, they arranged in a different way, but they uh, follows a similar arrangement around the uh, sulcus limitings. So if you uh, see the uh, right top that it shows you the uh, brainstem uh, during the embryological prospective um, uh, period. And you can see uh, this um, uh, neural, uh, this uh, nucleus, neural cells uh, arrangement uh, from the uh, dorsal side to the ventral side, that is the uh, somatic sensory and the special uh, somatic sensory and then follows up with the visceral sensory and then the visceral motor and then the somatic motor and the brachial motor. So in the adult, uh, which is the right lower picture, that is a cross section of the um, medulla and you can see uh, these uh, uh, Nucleus still arranged uh, like uh, just like the the uh, uh, spinal cord. So you can have this uh, uh, sensory in the more lateral side, and uh, the motor uh, neural cells will arranged more in the middle side. So close to the midline of the false ventricle. This is a summary uh, of uh, what we just uh, talked about. 
and you can see in the picture and uh, in, in the picture the top part is the embryonic spinal cord and embryonic cardiac brainstem so um the cranial nerves or the cranial nuclei cranial nerve nucleus uh, follows a similar arrangement around the uh, sulcus limiting. So um, it's a different uh, between the spinal cord and the cardio brain stem is uh, when it comes to the brain stem, the wall of the neural tube just open up. So which means uh, which which uh, makes the uh, Somatic sensory and the visceral sensory will be more laterally, and the visceral motor and the somatic motor will be more close to the uh, middle side or close to the midline of the fourth ventricle floor. I like the animation um, pictures. Actually, uh, in the real world, the cranial nerve uh, emerging from the brainstem are not located in neat row. So if you see this picture, now you can see some of the nucleus are not like close to the uh, uh, floor of the fourth ventricle. The portion of this cell column uh, migrate away from their expected locations like this uh, pharyngeal motor neurons and uh, the somatic sensory uh, neurons, they run away or migrate during the uh, development. Uh, they are not close to their rows. So I already know the spinal nerves uh, or mixed nerves, they composed by uh, motor component and sensory component. Actually, they, all the spinal nerves have um, four functional components. The first one will be the somatic sensory. Uh, so they are afferent neuro, uh, neurons and uh, they carry afferent information. Uh, and uh, their sub cell body located uh, posterior to the uh, sulcus limitins and um, they collect pain, temperature, and the mechanical stimulus from uh, somatic structures. And uh, it becomes the posterior horn of the uh, gray matters. And they, 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 uh, another sensory component will be the visceral sensory. Uh, they are all um, uh, afferent uh, neurons, neurons, and uh, they recept endings in the uh, visceral organs, like the wall of the blood vessel or the uh, digestive tract. And then uh, they located posterior to the uh, uh, sulcus limiting, and uh, it becomes the anterior part of the posterior horn of the gray matters. The motor part of the spinal nerve uh, also includes two kinds of this uh, uh, neurons that will be the visceral motor and the somatic motor. And uh, the uh, uh, visceral motor is an efferent fiber, uh, uh, neural fibers and they um, uh, goes to the uh, like uh, they are the autonomic uh, neural uh, component and uh, it's just located anterior to the sulcus limitings it becomes the intermediate gray matters and then the uh, somatic motors are also the efferent nerve fibers they goes to the innervate the skeleton, skeletal muscle uh, so it located most anterior to the uh, sulcus limitings, and uh, it uh, becomes the anterior horn of the gray matter. For the cranial nerves, um, they could have the four previous functional components, 
and but they also have two more uh, functional components which don't exist, uh, exist uh, in the uh, spinal nerves, uh, which will be the uh, special sensory and uh, uh, the brachiomotor neurons. So the special sensory are the uh, uh, afferent uh, neurofibers. Uh, they collect special senses uh, from our eyes, from our ears, and uh, uh, so in the brainstem, these fibers carrying uh, information related to hearing and uh, uh, equilibrium. And uh, the uh, brachiomotor neurons are the different uh, nerve fibers, which uh, innovate the uh, striated muscles of the special uh, embryological origin. We call this uh, brachiomeric muscles. Uh, these muscles are the muscles of the larynx, pharynx, and the uh, face and the uh, jaw. This is a pretty good uh, summary of form for the uh, classification and location of the cranial nerve nucleus. And you can see if you uh, see the row of this um, uh, form, you can see uh, the uh, different nucleus in the different level of the brainstem. So in the mid-brain, uh, mid -brain, and you will see um, the oculomotor nucleus, and uh, the trochlear nucleus, the uh, trigeminal sensory uh, nucleus, and uh, the Edinger westphal nucleus. So, and also you can see uh, each of the nucleus, they are labeled with the associated cranial nerves. And uh, if you see the, uh, the uh, uh, different rows, you can see the uh, different uh, functional components, like the somatic motor uh, nucleus will be the oculomotor nuclei, trochlear nuclei, abducent nuclei, hypoglossal nuclei. So all these nuclei are somatic motor nucleus. So this is a pretty uh, good summary of the classification and location of the cranial nerve nuclei. So uh, uh, for the for the twelve um, cranial nerves, uh, no one uh, cranial nerves actually have all the functional components, but most of them of them have more than one uh, functional components. Um, so um, usually we um, categorize uh, the cranial nerves by their functional components. So uh, there will be three general categories are used to organize uh, the cranial nerves. So uh, the first uh, uh, category or type of these uh, cranial nerves will be the special sensory nerves. These nerves contain, contain uh, special sensory fibers. Uh, that will be sensory, and uh, it belongs to the special sensory. So uh, the uh, cranial nerve 1, 2, and 8 uh, were cut in, uh, categories uh, to this type of uh, cranial nerves. And uh, the second cranial nerve types will be the somatic motor nerves, which contains motor accents for uh, the uh, skeletal muscles, and um, they are considered the lower motor neurons. Uh, so uh, they, which include this uh, cranial nerve third, that, that it will be the oculomotor nerve. The fourth will be the trochlear nerve, the uh, uh, sixth 
will be the abducens nerve, and then will be the eleventh uh, uh, accessory nerve, and uh, the twelfth nerve, the hypoglossal nerve. And then the uh, third type will be the brachial, uh, branchial meric nerves. Uh, so these nerves uh, are more complex nerves that usually uh, contain several functional components. They can, uh, they all can innovate uh, pharyngeal arch, uh, these uh, musculatures, which include the fifth, the trigeminal nerve, the seventh will be the facial nerve, and uh, the ninth, uh, the, uh, the ninth and the uh, tenth cranial nerve. So uh, first will be the special sensory cranial nerves, uh, which include the olfactory nerve, optic nerve, and the vestibular cochlear nerve. The, uh, uh, olfactory nerve and the optic nerve, uh, usually we, because we did not come uh, out from the brainstem, so uh, especially for the optic nerve, we don't think it's a, a true nerve because it's direct, the direct outgrowth of the brain. And uh, uh, for this uh, um, uh, olfactor nerve, which responds to the uh, camel receptor in the nose, and uh, because uh, their nerve fibers uh, are passing through a very vulnerable part of the cranial cavity. So if you have a fracture or uh, other uh, traumatic brain injuries, this is a very vulnerable uh, part to be easily damaged. Uh, so uh, for the, third, the second optic nerve, because we will uh, discuss more later uh, in the uh, next section, so we will not uh, talk about uh, in detail here. And also, uh, same with this uh, vestibular cochlear nerve. This vestibular cochlear nerve, now you just need to know um, uh, it also called auditory or acoustic nerve. And then it comes to the uh, somatic motor nerves. Uh, these nerves include the third, fourth, the sixth, the eleventh uh, uh, and twelfth cranial nerve. So the first uh, somatic motor nerve will be the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve. Mm -hmm. These pair of this nerve uh, emerge from the space between the left and the right uh, cerebral peduncle. So the fossa between the cerebral peduncle, we call it interpeduncle fossa, the cranial nerve three the oculomotor nerve emerge right in that fossa. And uh, these um, uh, somatic motor nerves actually it con uh, contain a small component of the parasympathetic fibers. And uh, the nuclei of this uh, uh, oculomotor nerve, you can see the uh, top right picture and uh, the red, the red uh, dot uh, at the level of the superior colliculi at the um, oculomotor nucleus. So um, the primary function of this uh, oculomotor nerve is to innervate the extra ocular muscles uh, which lift uh, the eyelid, uh, uh, constrict pupils, and uh, change the shape of the lens. 
and uh, the muscle innervated by this uh, ocular motor nerve will be the uh, the superior the superior rect uh, rectors, the uh, uh, inferior rectors, the inferior oblique uh, muscle, and the um, these uh, uh, medial rectors and also innervate the levator uh, palpebrae supra, uh, uh, superis and also which also uh, innervate the muscle for the uh, pupil constrict and uh, the ciliary muscles uh, change the shape of the lens. So uh, if um, there is an injury for the cranial nerve 3, uh, the lesion symptom will include like uh, the ipsilateral, um, the lateral uh, strabismus, which means the uh, uh, deviation of the eye out. You can see the uh, uh, top picture shows you the lateral uh, strabismus. Uh, because uh, there's a paralyze uh, of uh, the medial rectus muscle. And uh, the patient may have the uh, diplopia that caused like uh, double vision. And also uh, will, the patient will have ptosis uh, because the drooping of the eyelid. And also the patient could have dilated pupil uh, and uh, the lens cannot be focused on near visions because of the paralysis of this uh, cranial nerve. And uh, the test of this uh, uh, legend could be the eye movement. You will, as a picture, uh, follow your finger movement and uh, also uh, like uh, popular response to the light will you will be used to test the, le the legend of the third cranial nerve. The uh, fourth cranial nerve uh, it's uh, a, a bit unusual uh, because uh, it's the only it, it, it is the only uh, cranial nerve which come out from the dorsal side of the uh, brainstem. And the nucleus of this uh, trochlea are also located in the level of uh, inferior collecula uh, in midbrain. And you can see the top right picture shows you the red dot, which shows you the trochlea nuclei. Uh, the primary function of uh, this trochlea nerve, it's uh, it innervate uh, one of the six uh, extra um, uh, ocular muscle, which will be the superior oblique muscle. Uh, this muscle could move the eye into in torsion, which means internal rotation. So the injury of the cranial nerve 4 will cause the paralysis of the uh, inferior oblique muscle, so which can cause um, the uh, strabismus uh, because this muscle uh, cannot move the eye into intorsion, which means down and out. So uh, the patient will be like difficult with walking down, down steps or reading. Mm, and also like uh, the patient will have uh, uh, diplopia and uh, the patient, if because uh, the diplopia, the patient usually have a head tilt uh, to correct, the, to, uh, try to correct the diplopia. And the test of this um, uh, cranial nerve lesion uh, usually we, we will like test a similar, uh, um, similarly with the um, ocular motor nerve. The third uh, somatic motor nerve will be the uh, sixth cranial nerve, the abducens nerve. 
So abducens nerve come out from the caudal pons. You can see from the middle, from the ventral side of the brain stem, I label it with a red circle. Um, so uh, these nucleus of this uh, abducent nerve located in the caudal pong, and you can see from the right uh, upper picture. Um, so you can see there's a, a red dot which labeled in its uh, abducent nuclei. And the, the function, the primary function of this uh, neural, neural uh, nucleus are the, uh, they innervate one of the six extraocular muscles. That will be the lateral rector muscle, which can move the eye out. So because the uh, lateral rectors are paralyzed when the uh, six cranial nerve are injured or injured. So uh, the patient will have this uh, medial uh, strabismus. The eye turns in. So you can see the picture in the right side. And um, so mm, the uh, lateral gaze will paralyze uh, And uh, the test of this uh, lesion are uh, also like um, when you test, you usually you test this uh, uh, third, this fourth, and sixth uh, uh, neural, the cranial nerve together. You ask the patient to look to the side. The fourth uh, somatic motor cranial nerve will be the accessory nerve. So the accessory nerve, sometimes we call it spinal accessory nerve because part of uh, this uh, uh, cranial nerve uh, come from the spinal cord. And uh, uh, the nuclei of this uh, accessory nerve are uh, very caught in the level of the uh, caudal medulla and the upper five cervical spinal cord segment. Now you can see the picture on the top side and the right top. So the primary function of these neurons is to innervate like the muscles could do the head rotation, flex and the extension, the shoulder elevation muscles. Uh, so the, the muscles will be, uh, it, it's the sternocleidal mastoid muscle in the upper trapezius. So when you check uh, with the, uh, this cranial nerve, you will ask the patient to turn their head or raise their shoulders. So the symptom will include like weakness with the rotation, the flexion, the extension of the head, and also the weakness of shrugging the shoulder. The fifth uh, uh, somatic motor nerve will be the hypoglossal nerve. These uh, nerves uh, came out from the uh, medulla level and from the top left picture. Uh, you can see the ventral side of the brainstem. And uh, uh, the new place of this hypoglossal nerve is located in the medulla. And the primary function of this nerve is to um, uh, move the tongue. So it innervates the muscle of the tongue. So uh, if you ask the patient to stick out of the tongue, and you can see the um, uh, patient, the tongue of the patient will like, uh, deviate to one side. So, uh, because of uh, the ipsilateral uh, muscle, the tongue muscles are paralyzed. Uh, so, the uh, uh, tongue, the tip of the tongue will 
point or towards to the lesion side. And also the patient may have like um, dysphagia. The bronchomeric nerves include the cranial nerve 5, 7, 9, and 10. And we will talk about uh, one by one. So the first bron uh, bronchomeric nerve will be the uh, trigeminal nerve, the fifth cranial nerve. And uh, in the picture, you can see this nerve come out from the uh, basal pons. And the nucleus located uh, in the mid pons. And uh, uh, this nerve composed by um, sensory part and the mo uh, uh, motor nerve fibers. So the motor nerve fibers goes to and innervate the muscles for chewing. Uh, so uh, we we'll also call it masticate, masticate muscles. And uh, uh, the sensory nerve fibers will uh, collect the sensation of the anterior uh, two-thirds of the uh, head region. And you can see uh, the picture uh, the right below, right below, and you can see uh, the face, uh, the forehead, and uh, uh, was labeled by three different colors, which means um, it's all this colored area, the sensation uh, coming uh, goes to this uh, uh, goes uh, to this uh, trigeminal nerve, uh, but the trigeminal nerve have uh, uh, three branches, so the go back uh, through different branches. Um, uh, the three branches are the uh, ophthalmic, uh, the maxillary, and the mandibular nerve. The, mm, the uh, uh, motor nerve goes to the uh, mastication uh, muscles. Because the trigeminal nerve have sensory and motor functions, so the legend of this uh, nerve could have different symptoms. They can have a sensory disorder or motor disorder. Uh, the sensory disorder could have ipsilateral loss of the sensation uh, because uh, this uh, sensation include the pain, temperature, proprioception or the tactile, so the patient will lose um, the sensation of the head and face and also the inter in inner oral cavities. And uh, there's a symptom we call it trigeminal uh, neurogia. Um, the patient could have a very sudden, very sharp pain uh, in this, uh, the the sensory region of the trigeminal nerve. Uh, it, it, the reason of it is um, because of the press or compression of the trigeminal nerve. Mm, the uh, motor disorder could include the uh, weakness in chewing uh, and also the jaw deviation to the, uh, the uh, affected side because of the paralyze of the, the affected side. Uh, so uh, the test could uh, include the sensory test and the motor test. So the sensory test, uh, you can use the corneal reflex test. You will use um, a swab to to stimulate the corneal of the patient and uh, to see how uh, the patient reflect. And uh, also, you can use a pin or a swap to check the tactile or the pain sensation um, of the testing side. And uh, for the motor function, you can use the uh, like test as the jaw um, strength. The, uh, seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve, come out from the ventral 
brainstem lateral to the abducent nerve, which I love labeled with the uh, red arrow. And uh, the nucleus of the facial nerve uh, located inside uh, the level of the medial uh, pons. And the, um, this nerve also has the sensory compulsion or, and the motor compulsion. So the motor compulsion which innervate the uh, facial muscles. So the facial expression, the eyelid closing, and uh, the stables of the mid-air um, was innervated by the motor nerve fibers. And uh, the sensory component where you can collect the taste from the anterior tongue. So uh, for the uh, lesions and the test of the facial nerve, uh, because the patient, uh, because uh, they have uh, um, sensory and motor component, so the lesion uh, of this nerve will cause the sensory loss from the anterior tongue, and uh, for the motor portion, like will be have like the patient will have the facial muscle paralyzed and. Uh, um, the patient will have this um, facial asymmetry and uh, um, uh, the patient could have uh, Bell's palsy um, and uh, will lo the patient will also loss of the corneal blink reflex. Bell's uh, palsy is um, damage of the uh, uh, facial nerve. So uh, we, we think it's a lower motor neuron damage. Um, so uh, pain and discomfort usually occurs on one side of the face. And uh, uh, the reason, the exact reason is, un is unknown. So uh, sometimes it can be caused by uh, viral infection, and for most of the people, the Bell's palsy is uh, temporary. Uh, it can begin suddenly and worsen over 14, 8, 48 hours. And the patient, you can see the asymmetry of the patient face and uh, uh, the wrinkle of the forehead has disappeared in one side. and. Uh, 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 they, uh, can, the patient cannot close their eyelid. So uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve is the ninth cranial nerve. Uh, they come out from the medulla and the nucleus located inside the medulla level. Uh, because they all, uh, this nerve uh, also contain the uh, some uh, sensory and motor components. Uh, so the motor components um, uh, goes to or innervate uh, the muscles uh, for swallowing, and the sensory uh, nerve fibers collect the taste for the posterior tongue and uh, the sensation from the pharyngeal. Um, so um, the uh, motor nerve are responsible for the gag and the small re re reflex. The lesion of the uh, glossopharyngeal nerve will cause uh, sensory loss, sensory decrease of the taste because they lost the, the uh, taste from the posterior tongue, and uh, uh, they will have the motor disorder. Uh, that means the loss of the gagging or, or the swallowing reflex. So the patient will be like have the uh, dysphagia. That means uh, the patient will have difficulty to uh, for the swallowing. So the test of uh, uh, 
the nerve lesion will include the discrimination for taste and uh, you can use the gag reflex to test the, uh, this nerve. The fourth bronchomeric nerve will be the uh, vagus nerve. This nerve is a um, long and complicated nerve. Um, they also include uh, com com uh, include the sensory and motor functions. The uh, sensory nerve fibers collect the taste from the uh, uh, palate to uh, epiglottis and uh, uh, the pressure receptor from the uh, aortic arch. The motor nerve fibers are the parasympathetic nerve fibers to and from the heart, the uh, pulmonary uh, system, the esophagus, and the, um, the uh, uh, intestines, and uh, swallow and speaking. So uh, the uh, uh, sensory paths for the structure innovated by this nerve will be the uh, um, visceral branches to the throat, the heart, the lung, and the GI tract. Uh, and the motor branches goes to the skeletal muscles uh, for the swallowing and the speaking. The lesion of the vagus nerve, uh, the symptom could include the irregular heartbeat, uh, difficulty for breathing, and uh, for the uh, a motor disorder could uh, uh, the patient could have dysphonia, uh, could have loss of the uh, gag reflex, could have the uh, slur speech. So the test of this uh, uh, vagus nerve could include like uh, it it could test with the um, together with the um, set at the uh, uh, ninth cranial nerve, uh, and also uh, check the patient for the uh, uh, the hoarseness and the volume and the clearness of the speech.